Well, speaking of Mario, uh, another trailer came out. So I, first of all, I thought the trailer looked great. It, look, I'll, I'll say all the shit that everybody else said. Um, Chris Pratt sounds like Chris Pratt, but it doesn't sound like he's going to necessarily get in the way of the movie. Uh, Charlie Day sounds like Charlie Day and it doesn't seem right for Luigi, but whatever. Um, Anya Taylor-Joy seems great for Peach. Um uh, we're very happy to see her as a girl boss. Let me be clear. Yeah, uh, she's she changes into pants. It's fine. <laughs> it's good. It's good. Luigi will be kidnapped. Please. He's the damsel. <laughs> um, it's I wouldn't only not Justin nearly, right. Yeah, uh, but honestly, like the, the animation and the treatment and the way they're weaving in like Donkey Kong, Mario Kart. Yeah, uh, it, Brooklyn, uh, like it's like the ultimate fucking Mario treatment here. Yeah, it's it, like I saw the trailer and I'm like, OK, this is going to make a gazillion dollars, a gazillion. Yeah. Yeah. There's no way it can't. And it, yeah, it looks like a kid's movie, but that's all you, you need to be a good kid's movie. Solid humor. Nail all the references and you're going to make a gazillion dollars. It's like the perfect um intersection of all things that make something successful like re- <laughs> like recognizability multiple generations that are connected to the material uh, a, a respectful but innovative treatment of the material um and then you know we've talked about like how can they not release a video game of this thing like that you know what a missed opportunity for them well i think we forgot like the fucking parks are opening right with this movie like, oh yeah the super mario world uh, this is super the universal. nintendo world yes yeah, super nintendo universal, universal. I remember, I remember when it was first announced, my wife was like, you hear that they're making us, they're making a soup, uh, you know, a, a, a park about Super Nintendo. <laughs> and I was like, Super specifically, Nintendo. specifically the SNES. Yeah. Well, uh, like there, there's a number of uh, tours of the Japanese one and um, like reviews of it and stuff. And Gloria, it, it, they go on for like an hour and 10 minutes. Gloria will just be glued to it. She's like, can we please go to this fucking park when it opens? Yeah, please. I'm definitely taking Gabriel and uh, it, yeah. it releases, especially the yeah. uh, Florida one. I'd probably go to the Florida one. Oh, and she, I don't know. So did Gabe see the trailer? Actually, he hasn't. Well, I showed him what? the first trailer and he was he's like not he doesn't really understand ah. like movies yet. Like he doesn't get the appeal of them. Got he's it. like, oh, you just like sit down and you like watch something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She, like, well, I, I showed he, her the, he likes interactivity, you know, well, that makes sense. I, sh- I showed her the original one and um, she liked it. But then I showed like this one. She was like. Uh, Mario Kart, Yoshi's. Oh my God, a fire flower. Oh my God, a Tanuki suit. And yeah, you know, and and she, I, she actually turned to me like it. It, it was almost like um, like cartoonish and fake. She was like, "I think we should see that movie a bunch of times in the movie theater." Like it, it was almost like like they should somebody should have filmed her from Illumination and put that out as the trailer. Like yeah, we should. I mean. Do I, that. I'm definitely going to take him because he's going to like it. But yeah, he, he I think trailers are confusing to him, too, because it's like you're just like seeing a bunch of random scenes. Yeah, you know, he needs to see the the narrative tied up. <laughs> <laughs> she likes going to the movie theater and I love going to the movie theater. And so you would think that we'd be there like once a weekend or something. But th- to be honest, like not that many like children's movies come out for uh, in movie theaters anymore. So, yeah, not too I many go. movies that are appealing. It, you know, I, I I'm very excited to see what happens with this Avatar. Like, I, I don't think I'm seeing this thing. First of all, it's certainly not anytime soon because like it's three hours long. Yeah, not, like what? Look, I am not taking my wife to that movie. <laughs> she she the I can't imagine Nina disliking any idea more <laughs> than like let's have a date night watching that Avatar sequel. Um, yeah, I wonder how it's gonna do because it's you know they spent a lot of money on it. They got to make a lot of money to get their money back, but. You know, James Cameron, he he pulls it off. Out. Don't count he him out. He knows how to do it. I, I, my theory is that it, it'll do inexplicably amazing. And it, <laughs> for the third time in a row, we won't be able to explain it. <laughs> I, yeah, I think he's just one of those filmmakers that, you know, he has a point of view. Um, like, you know, he's got the environmental message in Avatar. He's got, um, you know, some some things like that. But he doesn't like hit you over the head with it. You know, he he just tells us a story. His dialogue is blunt, like these bluntly translated 
<laughs> at Super Nintendo games where they get right to the point. His yeah. dialogue is clumsy and right to the point. So people are like, yes, I understand these characters. He 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 had like a, a James Cameron was in a sensationalist uh, he- headline last week. In an inter- interaction with Hollywood Reporter, Cameron said, a lot of things I did earlier I wouldn't do career-wise and just risks that you take as a wild, testosterone-poisoned young man. I always think of testosterone as a toxin that you have to slowly work out of your system. So like until that last bit, I'm kind of like following him where I'm like, well, you know, uh, whether it's testosterone or whatever, but like, I think like young galvanized men, you know, can be like a tremendous force of good and they can be a tremendous force of evil and war and, yeah. you know, terrible. But there, there is some, I don't know if, if, if it's uniquely male, but it seems, I, I would say it seems uniquely male where like in those teenage years, maybe early twenties years, like we get on this, like I'm on this divine mission or like I've got to do the thing I want to do or I'll die or, you know, like we get, and, and then like it kind of precipitously falls off, you know, after you're 30. Yeah. Which kind of doesn't sense. indicate that there's like, there's some kind of a chemical spike, like I've got to reproduce. And then, you know, you chill out again to so kind of follow what he's saying, but to say, li- to literally say, I, I, I always think of testosterone as a toxin that you have to slowly work out of your system. I yeah. wouldn't say it's a, it's a toxin, my man. Yeah, because, I mean, you know, there's a lot with the war. <laughs> there's lots of innovations, too. So you kind of need that youthful ex- exuberance, as they say. Yeah, I mean, it's um, just this it's just this like hormone of aggression and aggression is not always bad, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. And then, yeah, of course, as you get older, you mellow out. It's just, uh, you know, that's the story of life. I wouldn't call it a toxin, no. I, I you know, it, 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 people make a lot of noise about a comment like that but it just makes me wonder like where's this guy coming from like was he trying to that almost feels to me like somebody who's like you know the the lady doth protest too much me (laughs) thinks it's a little (laughs) like like are you still in the throes of your like you know aggressive crazy because the guy is a a fucking madman yeah you gotta be for for and he's kind of like a tom cruise where where it's been an open secret for a super long time this guy's a dickhead like this guy is like unpleasant to work with um like every every story he's been telling, even in the last month, have been like, I was working on the first Avatar, and this guy, I'm not going to tell you who it is, came in my office and he said, it's too long. And I said, look at me. You got one chance to like this movie. Because <laughs> <laughs> if you tell me to cut this thing, and it's got to be five hours, we all know that. <laughs> if, if you tell me to cut this thing and I don't do it, and it makes a trillion dollars... You don't get to you don't get to go to the birthday party. You don't get to eat any of the pizza. It's like I'm paraphrasing. <laughs> but uh, but it, it, he said something like that or I was like Jesus guy like back off. Like yeah. isn't somebody allowed to tell you like maybe it shouldn't be 3 hours? <laughs> yeah, it, it's like, you know, cuz we we went through film school. We've got gone through useless critiques. <laughs> But you don't, you don't be like, hey, can't my video of just like my feet for three hours, I can't cut a minute of it. It's that kind of hubris, you know, I, I, I something happened where I watched like that Tom Segura interview with Quentin Tarantino, which is a very good interview. It was a good interview. And just by watching it, YouTube has been just been pummeling me with Tarantino and I kind of enjoy it, but you know, it's a lot of like TikToks and stuff. And a very obvious common theme amongst all of them is like this guy owes a lot of his success, obviously to his talent, but, but maybe just as much he owes his success to his own hubris, to his own, like, I'm going to make it this way. And if you don't like that, I'm going to go take it to somebody else. Like the, he, it's, it's, it's kind of a negotiating tactic. There's an, like Tarantino brings an element of unpredictability and predictability where you're like, I don't think we can really negotiate with this guy. I think we take him or leave him. And there's some, definitely something to be said for that when you're trying to, um, you know, if you're confident in your work and you're looking for resources and you're looking for the right people to work with, uh, to, yeah. to have no compromises basically. And I, so yeah, I think Tarantino having no compromises has served him well. I'm sure that it, the same can be true of, of James Cameron, but yeah, I kind of wish we could go back to those workshop classes and be like, the fuck did you say about sexually Frank? <laughs> You want me to do what? You want me to do what? You don't get to come to the screening if you're going to say shit like you get, that. You don't get the pizza party. You don't, <laughs> you don't get it. Yeah, I'm not I'm not ordering you your very own pepperoni. Get out of town. <laughs> get out of town. <laughs> James Cameron. 
His name is James Cameron, explorer of the sea. Do you remember um, that South Park? There's a South Park where he, he goes in like a little submarine. And, <laughs> <laughs> and the, the song is, uh, his name is James Cameron, explorer of the sea. No budget too, no sea too deep, no budget too steep. <laughs> Is, and then, and the joke in the in the movie is that um, there's a there's a bar at the bottom of the sea that for all of humankind that needs to be risen because it's lowered so badly. <laughs> the, the, and James Cameron's going to raise the bar. <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see if he still got it. Maybe he shed too much of his toxins. <laughs> yeah, right. Like he j- is just this soft little kitty cat now. Subscribe to Red Cow Entertainment on Patreon for full episodes every other week.